get two against them, and then they can't come back and do anything else about it. Uh, I definitely, love, I definitely love to make them guys upset. <laughs> so I definitely love that. I definitely love that for sure. Welcome into Teal the Show. It is another week of Jaguars football as they get ready to take on the Indianapolis Colts. I'm Jamal Saints here alongside 1010 XL's Frank Frangie. Frank, the Jaguars got a big win the first go around with the Colts. Can they do it twice? Yeah, they can. It's, <laughs> it's an odd situation, though, to play one team twice in a month this early in the season. So we'll see how that plays out. Now, it was a Colts team that didn't have either of their receivers. They'll have them both, both Pierce and Pittman this week. So it'll be a different Colts team. And it's a Colts team that's a little ticked off. They know they've been really rolled by the Jaguars two in a row now, mm -hmm. this year and the end of the season last year. So it'll be a worked up Colts team. It'll be a fun day. They should be, the Colts should be ready to go, but the Jaguars are just as motivated to try and get back on that winning track. As you heard Shaquille Griffin say to open the show, they wouldn't be upset if they could go ahead and sweep this Colts roster. I asked some of the guys in the locker room this week if it's odd to play a team this close together, and many of them say it doesn't bother them. A game is a game to me. You know, we always get the same game plan. I think it's kind of better that we know their personnel still fresh on our minds and stuff. But everybody's going to bring a new little tweak here and there, trying to get get up on the other team. And uh, we're trying to get back on the right track. A lot of things will be similar. We both know what each other are going to do. So now it all comes down to execution. The big difference this week is we know what this Colts defense is going to do. Just like last week, the Texans defense plays a very basic cover two defense the majority of the way. The Colts, Gus Bradley, so we've heard a lot of cover three defense here in Jacksonville th through his tenure. So this is a defense where you got to kind of be a little bit patient to work it. Yeah, you really do. You know, it's interesting last week, Jamal, even though Lovey Smith has played a lot of cover two at that Tampa two, he had played a lot of single high safety until the Jaguars game. So they weren't exactly sure what to get because he had mixed it up a little bit. Gus Bradley plays a cover three. He plays a defense where the, the defensive backs are watching the quarterback. That's mm -hmm. the big thing for Trevor. He's going to have to move him with their eyes, his eyes a little bit. He's got to be careful not to lock in on receivers because he's got a lot of guys in that defense watching his eyes. That's what zone defense does is you're watching the quarterback's eyes, and that's something Trevor's got to be careful of this week. We'll have to see if Trevor can take that step this week that we saw him struggle with last week. But the big thing with that, patience. You know, those defenses ask the offense to play clean football and patiently march the ball down the field. Something that a lot of the veteran players think isn't necessarily hard for young players to get a grasp of, but it does take a little bit of time. If you can believe in what you're doing, you can perform well at any point in the game, not rushing yourself or taking what the defense gives you. The Jaguars now on their first losing streak of the season, Frank, back-to-back -back losses, but this team still feels pretty good about where they're at right now. One thing about a young team, young teams can be erratic a little bit, good one week, bad the next week, but they also forget easily. Young teams know they're good. These guys that all got here were really good players uh, in college, they're real good players the early part of their career. It'll be a confident team. It still is about Trevor. Trevor's got to play with some confidence. Hit the open guys and don't turn the ball over. Those are the two things with Trevor. Is hit the open guys, don't miss a guy that's running wide open, and don't turn the ball over. But I agree with you. I, think, I don't think this is a Jaguar team that's lost any confidence. I think they're ready to play. It's a young, almost brash team. I think they're fine there. There's a little bit of brashness there. They're definitely still confident. They understand that they just have to clean up their mistakes, and they can get back into that win column this week. You know, when you take uh, a loss back to back, you know, uh, uh, confidence can start to go out the window. And the main thing is, I think our confidence level is exactly where it needs to be. It's evident when we play our style of, uh, of football uh, with our confidence and, and with the players that we have, it's evident that good things happen. And we got to win. It got to start this week. We got to win the division and uh, uh, try, try to go on a run here. We'll talk a little bit more about just what the Jaguars have to do to get back to their winning ways that we saw early in the season when Teal the Show returns after the break. We'll bring in Jaguar team reporter Ashlyn Sullivan when Teal the Show returns. Welcome back into Teal the Show. It's time to bring in Jaguars team reporter Ashlyn Sullivan. Ashlyn, thanks for being here tonight. Uh, big game this week. I know everyone's excited to kind of see the Colts for the second go around. This should be a very hungry Colts team this week. It absolutely will. I mean, the Colts, frankly, were embarrassed here in Jacksonville, and they were as well this past January. With that said, I think the Jaguars, as we all know, are struggling going up to Indianapolis. They're going to have to play a sound football game, and this Colts team struggling as well. They need a win. I feel like every single week we talk about it being a must-win for both teams. <laughs> it feels the same way this week, Jamal. It does kind of feel like that must-win kind of atmosphere, Frank. A three-game slive is tough to bounce back from. It is, but you have to be careful. This is the marathon, man. This thing goes a long time. <laughs> and we've gotten into the situation where almost every game is a referendum on who they're going to be. They play well this week where they're going to be great. They struggle this week where they're going to struggle. 
it's a long time. Worry about this week. I think the Jaguars have to not worry about what happened the last two weeks. Go play this week. I know that sounds like coach speak. We're, we're not coaches. But I really <laughs> think with the young team, go play well this week. I think that's what matters. There still has to be a little bit of balance there. It is a long season, but, you know, you don't want to look up and then all of a sudden it's week 10. You know, Ashlyn, this is a very interesting matchup because, as you mentioned, the Jaguars have kind of embarrassed the Colts and they've dominated them here in Jacksonville. But in Indianapolis, the Jaguars historically struggle. It's like a tale of two cities. It really is. And I go back to Michael Pittman and Frank mentioned it. He will be playing this game and he was not playing in Jacksonville. And the narrative was those couple of weeks where the Jaguars upset the Chargers and upset the Colts. OK, well, they aren't playing healthy teams. Hey, that's kind of true as of now. They struggled against healthy teams these past two weeks. So now the Colts have their two receivers in Indianapolis. I go back to a couple weeks ago. Michael Pittman just haunts my memory in Indianapolis because his name is over the loudspeaker, what seems like 20 times. If the Jaguars can beat the Colts with healthy receivers, that's key. But they haven't proved it yet this season, Frank. You know, if they're going to get a win, Frank, it's going to be a big part from what Trevor Lawrence is able to do out there on the field. We, no. we saw a little bit of last week, right. but there were some struggles. No. So people are a little worried. You want to tell me how many starts he's made? For you? <laughs> you know, I've lost track. <laughs> I know it's kind of my thing. Uh, I've lost track. He's a young guy, I'll tell you that. Ashley makes a great point. It seems like Michael Pittman's the name you all, you just can't quit hearing it when you're there, when they're playing well. But back to Trevor for a second. Two things. Hit the open guy. We've seen too many times when a guy will be running wide open in the middle of the field and Trevor will miss the throw early on in the game and don't turn the ball over. That's what people notice, and that's what people talk about, and I think that's what Trevor kind of grips about a little bit. Hit the open guy. He doesn't need to make great plays. He doesn't need to, he doesn't need to fit balls into a tight window yet in his career, mm -hmm. Jamal. What he's got to do is hit the open guy and not turn the ball over. I wouldn't mind seeing also Trevor take off and run a little bit. He's an athletic guy. Uh, they have some RPO looks. That, that's certainly built into their offense. I wouldn't mind seeing Trevor Lawrence win a little bit with his legs this week as well. You know, it just kind of feels like we don't know what Trevor is going to show up from week to week, Ashlyn. He's a couple of weeks he plays really well, and then last week we kind of see him make some mistakes that left the coaching staff even scratching their head a little bit for some of the throws. It, it's tough to really get a, a figure out who this guy is. It is. It's inconsistency, and that's a young quarterback. I think the biggest thing with me when I watch Trevor Lawrence, especially, especially the past couple of weeks, is he's really trying to force things. And we all go back to that interception in the red zone last week, and we saw the open play, the open just run for a first down, and he's forcing it into the end zone with something that's not there. And that's the thing that really stands out to me. If Trevor can just go with what is open, and Frank, you keep mentioning it, it's so obvious to us when we watch on TV or even on the field, oh my gosh, he's right there, he's open. Trevor just seems like he needs to settle down and just play consistent football. It doesn't have to be great, it just has to be good. Yeah, it's a little bit different when you're watching it on TV, right? Yeah, we we have a little bit of a better vantage point. <laughs> it's easier for us, I, but I do think this. Young quarterbacks are going to get nervous, Jamal. They are. They hear what people are saying. They've been successful their whole time. Well, this is a new world. This NFL thing is a new world. It's not like you're playing at Clemson and the Wake Forest defensive back can't cover your guy. And I think Trevor will be good. I have no doubt he's, he's, he's made up of the right stuff. He's a tough-nosed kid. He's a great guy. He's a great teammate. He's a great learner. It does take time. I will tell you this. I have not lost any confidence that Trevor Lawrence is going to be a really good quarterback in the NFL. Not one bit of confidence. It may take longer than some of us thought. I have not lost one bit of confidence that he's going to be very good. I really believe that. Yeah, some fans are shaking. Coaching staff not shaking. Frank Frangie's not shaking. We're, we're not shaking. Right, Ashlyn? Absolutely. Never shaken. Never shaken. All right. If the Jaguars are going to get a win this week, uh, let's figure out how we're feeling about that game. Ashlyn, do you think they can get the W? See, I have a hard time, and I hate being a negative Nelly, but if the Jaguars' offense plays anywhere close to the way they played last week and not converting in the red zone, they're not going to beat anybody. The Jaguars now have to prove to us that they can be successful on offense. The defense is doing their job. The defense is doing plenty. Foy Foy Foye Aluakon in the locker room last week said, man, I wish I could have given the offense more chances. The defense is giving the offense plenty of chances. Jamal, the offense just has to play better, and until they do, I have a hard time picking them, truthfully. All right, Frank, what do you think? Everything Ashlyn said. I there you know, go, just I, retweet. I, I, think, <laughs> I think what she said is right. I think the Jaguars are going to be a good team. They're going to win some games. This is a tough one. The Colts are really seething about how they've played against the Jaguars those last two weeks. I mean, this is a big game in Indianapolis. The people I talked to, I talked to Matt Taylor, their play-by-play -play guy. You can tell. You can feel it. It's a big game for them. I think the Jag Jaguars are going to get over the hump at some point. I think this is a tough matchup. They haven't traditionally played well in Indianapolis. 
I think this is a tough game for Jacksonville. Jaguars haven't won a game in Indy since 2017. We'll have to see if they can kind of break that streak this week. We do know the defense will keep them in games. That's what gives me a little bit of confidence is that everyone has so much faith that at some point the light is going to come on for Trevor Lawrence. Well, with the way the defense is playing, that'll keep them in ball games. At some point, if that light switch does come on, that means that they're going to be pretty good, right? Yeah, absolutely, it does. And again, it's not a big change. He doesn't have to change a whole lot. Hit the open guys and take care of the ball. And by the way, turnovers happen with young quarterback. We've seen history. That does change with young quarterbacks. I think it will with him as well. All right, we'll have to see if it changes this week. Thank you for tuning in for Tune the Show. Frank, Ashlyn, thanks for being here, and thank you at home for watching. We'll see you on Monday night, and we'll talk about what happens in the Jaguars-Colts game. Good night, and go Jaguars.